Hey everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review, and today we're going to be doing Catwoman! I'll never do that again. Issue number one! Take a look at this comic cover right here. Now, I love Catwoman. She's always been one of the most unique characters in the Batman family. Never quite a villain, but never quite a hero, although she's been more of a good guy than a bad guy. Always been able to straddle that line that the other characters couldn't, you know, in that neutral area. And she's always had that obsession, that compulsion to steal. Kind of an addictive personality. Although I could never relate to it, it was always something that was fun to read. Um, Selena Kyle doesn't steal for money. She doesn't steal for wealth. She steals for the hell of it. She's addicted to dangerous stuff. Dangerous action, dangerous consequences. She's addicted to the Batman. She just has an addictive personality, and it's actually quite an interesting thing to read. She also has that femme fatale to her, and I like characters with femme fatale. Uh, Ada Wong is another character with femme fatale. Uh, Mara Jade Skywalker, hmm? or Mia Jovovich, half of her roles are femme fatale roles. Actually, pretty much all of them are. But do you get the point? The femme fatale is a really great role for characters, uh, for females, because they can be beautiful, eloquent, and, uh, and very exotic, but at the same time, dangerous, smart, um, incredibly uh, tactical. They, they have a unique spunk to them. Um, they, they really stand out on their own, they're strong characters, uh, being dangerous and beautiful at the same time. And I love Femme Fatale when it comes down to Catwoman. She pulls it off very nice. So, I was excited when Catwoman was coming out with the new series. I enjoyed her original series. I enjoyed her in Gotham City Sirens. And hopefully I'll enjoy her in this. Judd Winnick is writing her. And Judd Winnick is a writer that I give a lot of leeway with. I don't... See, I said this before and I'll say it again. He's a, a writer that is either loved or hated by the fan base. Um... I feel as though he's pulled out more good than bad. Uh, I liked his Batman work. I liked his outsider work. His Green Arrow stuff, I've read a little, not too much, but it was okay. But I really didn't care for his later outsider work. And I really didn't care for his Power Girl stuff. Um, he's a writer that, when pointed in the right direction, or given a certain amount of freedom, can do really good stuff. Um, but every writer has their own bad day. So I do give Judd Winnick a lot of leeway. The thing that does make me cock an eyebrow... Like the people's champion when he defeats John Cena at WrestleMania. The thing that makes me cock my eyebrows is the fact that he's never written uh, Catwoman before. Yeah, he even admit to it. So I'm kind of curious on his take with Catwoman. We know by his various interviews that it's going to be sexy, 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 sexy. I believe Judd Winnick said sexy more times in one interview than any other person ever. Hey, guess what, Judd? You're in the record books. So we know that's at least going to happen. And we know he's going to make it about her doing heist. Which is really kind of cool. I, I like the concept of it being kind of Ocean's Eleven-ish. Uh, where she goes around and steals stuff. I'm cool with that. But the character is what makes me raise the eyebrow. So the question is this. is Will Judd Winnick do a good job at writing Catwoman? Or will he screw things up? You're just going to have to wait and see. So let's dip into Catwoman issue number one. The issue starts off with Catwoman rushing and grabbing her possessions. Her costume, her equipment, her cat, and jumping out of her window. Her apartment is then blown up by a bunch of people. Catwoman has a habit of pissing people off. You know, people she steals from, and she doesn't even remember who she steals from for half the time. So anyways, Catwoman is now homeless, has nowhere to go. She meets up with one of her friends. A completely new character that I've never, ever met before, and I've already forgot her name. I believe it begins with an L. I'm sure I'll learn it by issue four or five. Anyways, she tells Selena about these various different heists that she can pull off and some places she can stay. So, Selena goes out and pretends to be a barkeeper and tries to gain information from some Russian mafia bad guys. Along the way, she also finds a man who apparently beat the living crap out of one of her friends at one point when she was younger. So, Selena needs to take revenge on this individual. However, will this revenge cost Selena the job, the gig, and the information she needs? And in the end... Will Batman stick his hands in places he shouldn't stick them? You're just going to have to read and see. Let's get into the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. Good. By God, is this art great. 
for Catwoman. The art is fantastic. I really did like the art tone that they took with her. I like how they give her a little bit of a paler complexion. Uh, it gives her kind of an exoticness. The action is good in this. Um, and I have to say, Selena is portrayed, for the most part, pretty well. Uh, Judd Winnick likes bad boys, bad girls. I mean, he likes Jason Todd. And uh, Catwoman is a quintessential bad girl. And he writes her pretty decent. Uh, is it the best Catwoman's ever been written? I don't think so. I actually think Paul Dini has the best handle on Catwoman. However, it's still done well. And good job, Judd. Good job. Uh, bad. The ending scene is weird because Batman shows up in the end, and I won't spoil anything, but something goes on between Batman and Catwoman. It just seems too much at once. I'm all for Batman and Catwoman, but uh, what happened seemed a little off. You're just going to have to read and see. Um, and it really is that thing that kind of makes me iffy about this issue. The issue starts off very nice, uh, but it kind of tailspins towards the end. Uh, whether or not you should get it. Uh, if you're a fan of Catwoman, yes. If you're not a fan of Catwoman, proceed with caution. It's a good first issue in the beginning, but the ending still makes me raise my eyebrow like this. I guess it's something that is kind of like a cliffhanger, but it's not really... I don't know. I'm going to have to wait till issue 2 to really get a sense of what's going on in this comic. So as of now, I would say if you're a Catwoman fan, pick it up. You're probably going to enjoy it. If you're new to Catwoman, wait till I review issue 2 and I'll give you guys kind of a full synopsis on whether or not to jump onto the series. Um, for the most part, there was more good than bad, but there was definitely some ifs in there. Oh, and BTW. BTW. What is this? AIM? Uh, anyways, uh, be warned. Judd Winnick, the one thing he is, he's honest. This is not a comic for people that are like, oh no, it's too much TNA. She's naked through a lot of this. There's a, there are prostitutes everywhere. There's a lot of women around being sexualized. Um, it's not Frank Miller sexualized. It's actually handled with pretty decency. It's just a little too much of it. Um, a good example of this uh, being done right would be in Batwoman, where, you know, Batwoman and um, Betty Kane were shown to be uh, undressing at points, but it was never in an over-sexualized way, and it was never shoved on our face. It's kind of shoved in your face in this. I kind of tolerate it. I don't know why. I can't answer it. Um, but be warned, because there is a lot of TNA in this. I guess the problem is, is not how it's handled, it's just there's a lot of it, and it can be a little bit um, offensive to women. So, just be careful of that. But, on a whole, the issue itself was okay. It was just okay. So, with that said, I'm going to end this review here. This is Andrew saying peace out for now.